We met with Dr. Sabine Hazen. Now her FDA trials involving ivermectin were just approved by the FDA. But when we got back to the studio, we realized that we had a lot more questions for her. So we headed over to Malibu to meet with the doctor once again. Today we're at Progena Biome with Dr. Sabine Hazen. Dr. Hazen, thank you so much for having us back. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you what happened. We went back to the studios and we posted the show and had so many questions. People really wanted to know about your research at Progena Biome. Um, it was started with an interest to understand the microbiome and how does the microbiome have a correlation to disease, right? So. In other words, is there something in your gut that causes Alzheimer's or autism or Parkinson's? Um, so I've been doing clinical trials, as you know, for many years. And my uh, clinical trial that I was always renowned for in the pharmaceutical world was actually Clostridium difficile, which is a bacteria that I tried to kill for 25 years with either medications that were already available for it or clinical trials. When clinical trials didn't work, I would do fecal transplant, which is basically taking stools from a healthy donor and putting it in a, into an unhealthy patient with C. diff. C. diff causes diarrhea, um, can kill people, and so that was the ultimate solution for those patients. It was actually, you know, the pioneer work of Dr. Tom Barodi, Dr. Neil Stolman, Dr. Colleen Kelly, Alex Kurutz, so many doctors that have been, you know, leading this path of fecal transplant. When um, a paper, and I, I saw I was doing fecal transplant on patients and noticed that not only am I improving their C. diff, but their arthritis was getting better. And, or the psoriasis was getting better. And so it brought a curiosity to me that um, kind of spun by this picture, and I'm gonna kind of show you this picture. So this is fecal transplant. This is a case from Dr. Colleen Kelly, two cases of two patients. This wow. is alopecia areata, which is basically baldness, right? Uh, patients lose their hair, it's an autoimmune disease, that they are bald. The patients had C. diff, Clostridium difficile, and so she did fecal transplant on both, uh, on both these patients. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, after fecal transplant, the patients grew hair. When I saw this case report at, on this, in this journal as a case report, I said, what is growing hair? What did we do? So I became obsessed with the microbiome, essentially. So I- yeah, That's incredible. Yeah, so what happened was a path for me is, I went to Dr. Sidney Feingold and I said, Dr. Feingold, what am I seeing when I'm improving Alzheimer's? Because I had a case of a patient who was um, with C. diff, Clostridium difficile, and I did fecal transplant using his wife's fecal material, and his memory started improving to the point that he remembered his daughter's birthday. So I went to Dr. Feingold and I said, what am I seeing when I see improvement of Alzheimer's? And he said, you're seeing the microbiome in action. And he gave me a paper that is uh, his work of years and years of culturing these you know, stools of patients with Alzheimer's. And he identified a bacteria. And he said, put this paper in a safe. And when you buy this machine to analyze the stools, you're gonna understand the microbiome. And so I put the paper and I didn't really think anything of it. So he passed away during the Woolsey fire and I get a phone call from the family that I inherited all his books and all his papers. So in the middle of the fire, as we were relocated to a hotel, my family and I, um, I was so excited to go pick up all the books and my husband thought I was crazy. And I kind of felt like it was tag your it that I'm taking sure. over his work of this genius physician that wrote the book on anaerobic bacteria. And I felt, you know, humble, right? Yeah, he really passed on his knowledge to you because he knew where it should He go. knew what I needed to do. At the time, I remember going to Italy, speaking on the microbiome, 
And when I came back, I said to my husband, you know what, I'm taking our savings and I'm buying a machine to analyze poop. <laughs> and, and my husband said to me, you're going to do what? Yeah. And my husband said, sure. Yeah. I mean, if you know my husband, my husband's like the kind of guy that's, you know, sure, honey, do whatever you want. It's fine. You know, you know, I, I always say in research, you have to have valid, verified and reproducible data. If you don't have those three components, then your data is flawed. It, you can't really hang your hat on it. Especially with your trials that have been approved with the FDA with ivermectin. Yes. Um, you know, that's, that, that's big stuff. Yes. I'm a big believer in full transparency. One of the reasons I, you know, Dr. Barodi and I created Zyver, the ivermectin, <laughs> zinc, uh, doxycycline combo is because we wanted full transparency of what we were given to patients with COVID-19. I think, you know, 25 years ago, we were doing clinical trials on antibiotics. Then 20 years ago, it became monoclonal antibodies, biologics for everything, right? And then, and now we're entering the world of the microbiome in capsules. Mm -hmm. You know, where are we going with that if we don't understand what we're doing? And I, my whole point of this biotech company, if you like to put it that way, which is really at research. We are not a consumer product. We are just a research company. My whole interest was to get the doctors on board to listen, because unfortunately these biotech companies and these products are coming so fast that the doctors don't have time to catch up. And then they see the sequela, the complications in their offices and they are left with, well, how do we fix this? Right? And so what happened was I started looking at the microbiome and the first thing I noticed was, wow, we're all different. And I'm actually gonna show you the picture of how we're all different. It's almost like a, a genetic code. It's a, a genetic code. So it's basically, so we take a stool sample that's the size of a fingernail. And in that stool sample are thousands and thousands of bacteria. So we have a ch choice. We can look at the surface of the microbiome or we can go deep into the species. And this is what we look. So this is basically, I forget how many, 26 patients. And each column is a patient and each color coded is a uh, group of bacteria, right? A group of species of bacteria. So when you look at every one separately, you see how everybody is different, right? Yeah. And which makes total sense because we all have different fingerprints. Sure. How can we not have a different microbiome? Here you are, you've eaten, I don't know where yesterday, where are you from, where are you born? And it makes total sense to me because, yeah. you know, I, I've traveled the world, I've, I've, I was born in North Africa, you know, so all these things change my microbiome, right? That I was born with from my mother, from mm -hmm. my grandmother, from my great grandmother, etc. So within each individuals, you cannot possibly compare two people because they're completely different. So what's good for you is not necessarily good for me, right? So that's exactly why the COVID is showing up differently in people. Exactly. Bio. And because I knew this and I knew the, um, the science behind the microbiome and the differences in the microbiome, mm -hmm. I realized that something is happening inside the microbiome that some people are having changes and therefore catch COVID and some people they're doesn't a, matter, they're asymptomatic. They're, they're asymptomatic. It's yeah. all in the fingerprint of your microbiome. And so environment, like how much, like it, it, for your biome and right. how you can fight things off, infection, right. disease, um, your environment, also what you put in your body, of course, is a big factor. Right. But what about like medications and things that you may, may All be that affects the microbiome. Yeah. Probiotics affects the microbiome. Is that the right probiotic for you that you're taking? Right. Vitamins, is there something in the vitamin that your gut doesn't, you know, agree with? All that, your foods, a person that is from Africa is different from a person that's American African. I, I think that that is a great point because right. you look at some of the, the cultures in Africa and they don't have a lot of the problems that we have Correct. as far as like obesity Correct. or, or diabetes. The or, Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right there. Right. I mean, no, you think it's no, because of their they're diet? They're living in the environment. Right. They're living in the environment. They're eating the foods. They have diversity. 
The key to life is diversity. Once you globalize the diet, you're creating, and in fact, there is data that with globalization comes globesity. Tell me what your thoughts are as far as our, the, the food that we are consuming, um, the, the genetically modified seeds, for instance. Right. So I think that's a mistake, in my opinion, because we don't know what it's doing to our gut live bacteria. Your bowel is your temple, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to give it foods that could potentially alter the bacteria that is giving you your potential longevity or that is growing your hair or that is growing your nails or that is making you happy, right? And, and, and the fact that, you know, people people talk about how, you know, I consider the, the, the gut and the core of your body really the, the center right. of the spokes that right. turn the wheel. Um, and when people say that I have a gut feeling or this right. makes me sick to my stomach, right. there's a direct connection, connection between yes. your emotion and your gut and how it can change the, the cells in your 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 Absolutely. genetic makeup just about how you feel there's a, I'll go even one step further um, that gut feeling you get when you get attracted to someone it's your microbiome that is symbiotic to that person and and we see it when we decide like which husband and wife stools we're gonna take if the <laughs> husband and wife are and, and that's been my trick in a way. If the husband and wife have a happy marriage, the chances of success of my fecal transplant will be much higher than if they don't. What happens at the microbiome level of families is actually, I'm gonna show you. And this is, so this is my family portrait. I hope I'm, no, I'm upside down. Okay, Okay. Right. So this is, this is my family portrait. I'm not gonna say who it is, <laughs> but remember each color is a group of bacteria. Right. Now you could see there's a lot of similarities in this family. So I showed you the picture before that was a mm -hmm. lot of different microbiome and everybody's an individual. Different but ages, within different. the family, there are similarities. In fact, when you look at, this is the mother, father, child one, child two, we won't say which child, um, you know, you will see that there's similarities between husband and wife which is fascinating. I've been married to my husband for 26 years, right? Yes. We're resembling each other. You see it with, with couples that have been married for so long. Yes. They start resembling, they start talking the same. Yeah, In fact, mannerisms, my, everything. Everything. Now, when you apply this to disease, and I'm gonna show you a case of autism. So when you apply this to disease, okay, and you have what we call the Shannon Index, right? So the Shannon Index is your index of diversity. The more diverse you are, the healthier you are. Now this is a mother. This is child one, child two, child three. Now you can see child two and child three, mm. child one and two are actually quite identical. And child three is not. And that kid has a, dis has a disease. So, and I'll, I'll kind of show you others. This is, um, so this is the same thing, mother, child, mm -hmm. and this child actually has Crohn's disease. And you can see the overgrowth of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now this is a kid that we did something to change the microbiome um, to, in order to improve his Crohn's disease and to see if what we did improved Crohn's disease. And this is the microbiome after. So this correlated with his improved colonoscopy. It, it correlated with his fecal calprotectin, which is the marker for Crohn's disease. If you look at the Shannon index before we did what we did, it was 2.9. And then after we did what we did, it went to 4.9, almost matching the mother. And I like to compare that to planet Earth, right? So if you remove, you have a beautiful garden again, and you've got trees and you've got plants and roses and everything. And then you start chopping off a couple trees and then a couple flowers. Well, the bees don't have anywhere to go and the birds don't have anywhere to go. And pretty soon you have a desolant area that's full of disease and microbes because you've removed all the beautiful creatures and the beautiful planet that was inhabiting. So it's the same thing at a microscopic level in your gut. The more you kill off all the bacteria little by little, mm -hmm you're left with a few bacteria that are, you know, uh, creating the disease.
my concern with all these altered foods, altered, you know, products, these untested products that are out there of bacteria is what is that doing to our kids' microbiome? In other words, the next generation. Because if you pay attention to autism, you will notice that in 1980, the rate of autism was one in 2000, and now it's almost closer to one in 40. Now people will say, well, you know, it's, we have better testing now, but actually I disagree. I think it is more pronounced because we have changed the, the microbiome, our microbiome that the moms are giving to their children is changing. And my biggest concern is what happens in 50 years from now? Is it gonna be one in one? Is one in one kid gonna be, that's gonna be born autistic? Hmm. So, you know, these, nothing happens coincidentally. Things happen to make you aware of a bigger problem. And my bigger problem is if we don't stop and look at what we're doing and pay attention, then, you know, we may lose humanity. The work that you do is yes. so important. Thank you. I think it's, I think, I think it's so important and so needed. Thank and you. I, I think it's fantastic. Dr. Hazen, thank you so thank much you. for having thank us again. You. And I know that we're gonna have a million other questions for you. They're all gonna be asking, what should I be eating? <laughs> exactly. What am I eating? I don't know what to eat anymore. Exactly. So. The, the meditation and, and all that kind of stuff I know is gonna come up. Yes. So I'd love to talk to you more about Absolutely. that. Absolutely.